Okay, so take a look at your little calendar and then flip over to the back. Okay, so every teacher, pretty much our AP teacher, um, we have to come up with like a plan, okay? And so the plan is to help you prepare for the AP test since you're in this class. Obviously, that is the point of taking an AP class is to get credit. So remember that I know that you are starting, if you have not already, you will soon to have your senioritis kicking in wanting to be done with everything and that you're excited about a lot of things and I'm excited with you but I want to also try to keep your motivation in the right place you'll get a semester of calculus for a lot of people that's the only one that they ever need for a math credit at all you know depending obviously on what you pick for your major uh, but you're in a small class with people you already know and so those are like great things compared to when you get to college or in like a big lecture hall with 200, 300 people. Um, so as far as semester exam, okay, you have two options to not take an exam, okay? Option number one is that you can be exempt, okay? An exemption is great. You don't have to take it, but you will have an EX on your report card where your grade would have gone, okay? Um, there are certain criteria though that you have to meet in order to be exempt so if you look right here okay you have to have no more than three absences college days do not count but it excused absences do it is per class period not for the whole day um, and then your year average needs to be an 80 with quality so with quality points you need an 80 basically um, and then you have to be taking the AP test which all of you are okay that's option number one option number two okay if you're taking the AP test which again you are because all of you signed up um, is that you can just earn a 100 for your exam grade so rather than having an EX you'd have a 100 as that grade and that would be factored in with your year average and all that so the way that you do that look down here at this lovely chart is if you do one two three four five six seven you get a 100 Okay. If you go to only six, you can have a 99. Okay. If you go to whatever's less than six, five, you can have a 98. Okay. Then you can have a 95. And then less than that, you don't get anything. You don't get anything. Okay, fine. I'll do 85. And then you get nothing. Okay, so the point is that you're putting in a couple of hours of work, right, studying in place of taking an exam since you're already taking the AP test. So flip over to the other side. Okay, and you have a lovely calendar. So here's today. Okay, you just got back from spring break. Uh, there are like a billion of them. You have to go to maybe three to not take an exam. I have to be there for all of them. So if you think that your spring is <laughs> going to be busy, mine will be too. But I'd love for you to come and learn some stuff, review, all that kind of stuff. So some of them you'll notice especially early on are on like specific topics. So like limits we did forever ago, related rates we did forever ago but then kind of towards the end it's just more like mixed mm -hmm. trying to like we'll be reviewing in class at that point so hopefully that'll cut try and get you caught up you will notice your mock exam thank you for saying that is on the wrong date it's April 11th okay so go ahead and just switch these two okay we're not gonna have a study session on the day of your mock exam okay that would be terrible uh, a million but I'm trying to have a lot so that you can come to them when you're able to now if you work right after school and don't think that you can go to them you can come in during sixth or seventh and I'm gonna work on that when you finish what we would have done after school I'll sign off on it and you'll collect signatures on the little chart can we come okay. to all of them? sure no. oh yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> I, five, F, F prime, and F double prime. Okay? It's not terrifying. Because you don't have to go to all of them. Just go to a few of them, you know? Okay, yeah. And then look, here's your test. 
marked completely in black where you almost can't read it. Okay? And then, but guess what after that? Guess. I won't make you do anything. Okay? Pinky swear. Pinky swear. Unless you want help on, like, reviewing for, like, a placement test or something. Question. Yeah. <laughs> and even if you end up having to take the exam, I will not review you for it. You have to review yourself. Okay? Uh, is yes? there not a project? There is not a project. Oh, okay. This is your project. Just come do a little bit of math. Okay. Question okay? again. Till like five. So after school till five. Okay. Girl, please. We'll start at like 4.15. It's like 45. That's shorter than class. Oh, are we going to review in class? We will, but we have one more unit to get through first. <laughs> this is the last one, so count how many we've already had. Plus uh, one. Could I have a piece of paper? <coughs> the yellow one, specifically? Oh, yeah, sure. And look, I ordered a poster of this, so I'll put it on the wall in case you ever need to look at it. Why okay, do you don't like this? Just switch the mock exam. Yes. Okay? All right, any questions about the plan? Yes. yes. No. Wait, okay. You have question on the plan? Wait, wait, wait. How are you going to grade our AP, like the mock exam? Oh. Uh, I mean, it'll just be graded and then curved. AP style. A lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, usually a 50 would go to a 70. What, 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 ish. usually what grades do your kids get on a, this is how we're going to figure out what we mean. I mean, what do you mean? Like, is this usually 70, 60, Like, all they failing? On the mock exam? Yeah. That's not your exam grade. Yeah, 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 I know. Okay. Um, I mean, it just but depends. It's in our report card grade, you know? That's true. That's, that's I mean, it will be hard, but it will be curved. So I would think like CBA. Like it'll be curved the same as a CBA. Oh, okay. So like everything in the same thing. Yeah. So like the F and the Oh, yeah. And then also put right here. Okay, or Saturday. Remember, you have a second option, April 14th. So if something happens and you miss the 11th, you can come on the 14th. But remember, we're getting y'all pizza for Wednesday because it's right after school. We're not getting food for Saturday. Okay? Oh, my God, God, you're so late. Hey. Hi, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we ready to do notes? No. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you about the yellow paper later. <laughs> okay. Uh, we also have our we have outlined in the and the next week is our summer. No. Yeah, I know. Wait, how much is this week? About what? I don't like any of the essays that we're Okay. What do you have for the class? Okay. Uh huh. You know what? <laughs> she did. She had her baby. Maybe because she put the last Oh, ow. All right, here's a pad. Imagine a little in slow mo here. This is never going to be due. Uh, wow. Yeah. Okay, the packet that you got Thursday, Friday last week is extra credit. I'll send the answers today. I was going to send them over the break, and I forgot to scan them. Can I have so. one? Why would you do yeah, that? Sure. How would you send it over the ring? Just in case you're working no. on it. No, nobody's <laughs> working on it. No. Yes. If you texted me last night, she was like, is the thing due? I was like, I don't know. No. Don't yeah, know. I, I texted Mary, and she was like, like no. Just don't do it, bro. What did you ask me? Another one of those packets. Another one of those packets. Okay. Okay, how do we do this together? Bye. 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 All right, we really do have to start. Okay. <laughs> okay. We are going to start with number three. Um, since a lot of y'all are missing, we're going to do number one tomorrow. Okay, so look at it. You have a graph right here of your equation. Y equals 1 over 3x plus 1. Okay, and it says find the area of the region enclosed by this graph right here. Okay, graphed for you. And then x equals 1 and x equals 5. What do those lines look like? I wonder. Exponential. Vertical. Vertical. Okay, so this one is kind of exponential looking. Okay, but x equals 1 would be like this. And what would x equals 5 look like? Basically the same, right? x equals 5. 
So if I wanted to find the area enclosed by those graphs, I would be wanting to find this right here. Okay, how do you find the area under the curve? Anti. An integral. Good. My other class is like, read one sums. And I was like, no, no. Okay, integral from where to where? From 1 to 5. 1 to 5, good. Okay, area equals integral 1 to 5. Okay, and then what are we integrating under? 1 over 3x plus 1. Boom, 1 over 3x plus 1 dx. Okay, and that is the exact area. Okay, now if I want to integrate that, we're going to actually do it all the way. We have answers here. Uh, what method will we need to you use? You okay, so. good. So what's my u going to be? 3x plus 1. Okay. So I want you to see if you can finish that. I know it's been a week. Okay, you're going to take the derivative, solve for dx. Oh. <laughs> How is Hawaii, Mara? Do you have a, do you have a fabulous tan? No. No. I don't really get Oh. I got uh, a temporary tattoo, and now I have a lightning tan on my arm. Do you see it? <laughs> Pretty awkward, but I did like a fun run, and they gave us this tattoo, and I went camping with it on. And now I'm like Harry Potter on my arm. It's a what? Yeah. Okay, so du is 3 dx. dx is what then? Over 3. So when I rewrite, it's 1 over u du. But where could I put the over 3? In the front. Okay, other thing that you have to do is change your endpoints. So if they were 1 and 5, remember that you plug those in here to know what the new ones will be. So plug in 5. 3 times 5 is? Plus 1 is 16. And then plug in 1. 3 times 1 is 3. Plus 1 is 4. Okay, antiderivative of 1 over u, what do we get? Okay, ln u. And then we're going to plug in 16 and 4. Okay, so far so good? Okay, plug in 16, you get the ln of 16. Plug in 4, you get the ln of 4. Now, probably, maybe one or two of you are wondering, why don't we put the bars? Remember, once you plug in a number, those bars go away. Okay, 16 is already positive. We don't have to keep absolute value bars around it. Okay, then what do I do with these guys? So I'm going to subtract. Hold that thought there. So ln 16 minus ln 4. Remember, my one-third is kind of out here on the outside. And then at this point, to match your answer with one of those answers, you have to remember your log properties. And it's pretty much the same one that we do every time. When you're subtracting logs, what do you do with these numbers? Divide. So if it's ln 16 minus ln 4, that's the same as ln of 16 divided by 4. And what is 16 divided by 4? So we want a third ln 4. Which is answer What's the B. Difference of B and C, though? Uh, you're not allowed to distribute the third into the ln. Now, since especially since someone in the other class asked it, they were like, I thought you could move that number. Okay, true, you can, but remember that if you're going to move the number here, you have to move it up as an exponent. Do you remember that that's another rule? You could write this as the ln of 4 to the 1 third power. But that's not how any of the answers look. That's why I wouldn't, you know, worry about that. Okay, but you are allowed to do that. But if you're trying to match, that would be unnecessary. Okay? All right. We remember that? Make sense? Yeah. Okay, turn the page. So our whole unit pretty much is going to be on area and volume. So we're going to look at a couple of different types of area. The first one, I named these. These aren't like real names, okay? But I named it Sandwich. Okay, not because I'm hungry, but because you have a sand, you have a, one on top and then one on bottom. And so like your area would be between them, kind of like uh, a sandwich, okay? So f of x would be here, g of x would be here, and your region would be bounded between those two functions. 
if you wanted to represent that area, what you would do is you would integrate f of x minus g of x dx. Where f of x would be whichever function is on top of that region, and then g of x would be the bottom boundary of that region. Okay, then your endpoints would be typically wherever they cross. So I'm going to label this as x equals a, this as x equals b, and then we'll integrate between those letters here as your boundary. Now, if you are wondering why that works, I'm going to draw you a second picture that I don't need you to draw. Okay, this is just kind of to help it make more sense why we would do that. Okay, if f of x is here, okay, let's draw this same picture. And I integrated from a to b. That would be all of the area under the curve, right? So it would be this in yellow. Okay, then let's say that my g of x is also on there and it's here. If I integrated g of x, I would be integrating all of this under here. And do you see if I do the, the yellow area and then I minus out the striped area, this is what I would be left with in the middle. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, oh. if I only want that middle pocket, I would integrate yellow under f but then I would minus out what's under G, and that would leave me with this area in the middle. That would be my region R. That make sense? Okay, another interesting fact, it, not really interesting, but pretend. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's above the x-axis, below the x-axis, if it crosses the x-axis, it's always true. Top minus bottom, okay? So, sandwich example right here. It says, find the area bounded in the first quadrant between y equals 2 root x and y equals 6. Okay, so sketch a graph for me of both of those equations. Okay, what does 2 root x look like? Yeah, it looks just like root x, but the 2 makes it a little steeper, right? So it's going to start at 0. Okay, there's 2 root x. What does y equals 6 look like? Yep, yeah, so we'll pretend 6 is here y equals 6. Okay, and now you want to read very carefully where it says we're bounding our region. So look what it says. In the first quadrant between those two graphs. So when I shade, I'm going to shade between those two graphs. But if I can't go past the first quadrant, where am I going to start shading? At what x value here? 0. Now, I want to keep shading between those until here. Problem is, I don't know what that is. If I want to find where those cross, what could I do with their equation? Set them what? Equal. Set them equal to each other, and then I'll know where they cross. So, to find my intersection, find intersection, I'm going to let 2 root x equal 6. So that's a good question. If I was going to keep shading here, when would I stop? They never cross again. So that's why you, if I want it bounded, I want it cut off, then I have to stop here. I can't keep going past that or else I would have like an infinite area that would keep going forever. Okay? So think about it. If you're going to make a sandwich, you need a top and a bottom. Top of the bread, bottom of the bread, and then that's the lettuce that... So we're going to stop at the intersection. That's where we're going to stop integrating from. So like, look guys, you're going to do this. Area equals integral from 0 until this number that we don't know yet. And we're about to find out. So we need to know what that is. And then let's go ahead and set up the rest of the integral. Which of those functions, the 2 root x or the 6, which of those is the top of the sandwich? The 6. The 6. Minus which of those is the bottom of the sandwich? The two root x. Because it's top minus bottom. So this is the top of the sandwich. This is the bottom boundary of the area. 
okay? So let's go ahead and keep going and find this second number here. So I got to divide by 2 before I can square. What's 6 divided by 2? 3. Root x is 3. Last step. Square. Square both sides. So x is 9. So now I know that my region is between x equals 0 and x equals 9, and that's where I'm going to integrate between. Okay? From here, you would do that as one integral all at the same time. What is the antiderivative of 6? Nothing. Uh, anti. 6x. And then when I get to my 2 square root x, that's x to the 1 half, yeah? yeah. So if I want to add 1 to a half, That'd be what? Add one, three, yep, two. three halves. And then if I want to divide by three halves, I'm going to times by two thirds. So I have two times two thirds. Upper boundary is nine, bottom boundary is zero. Now, would there be a way for me to write this a little bit better? times the tops together, right? What would you get? Four thirds. So I'm going to rewrite this one more time before I start plugging in. 6x minus 4 thirds. And then if x is to the 3 halves, remember that's square root x cubed. Yeah. That's if it's u sub. So since we're not doing u sub, we don't have to change any endpoints. Good point. Okay, we're plugging in 9 first. What's 6 times 9? 6 times 9 is 40 something. Oops, 54. Close. There's a 4 in it, though. Okay, minus 4 thirds. And now we're going to plug in 9 to this. Remember, do the root first. What's the square root of 9? 3. Then cube it. 27. Now... If it's free response, do you have to figure this out? No. no. Should you be able to? Yeah, probably. Okay, but you don't have to. Okay, plug in in zero. What am I going to get? Zero. Zero, zero. zero. Okay? So if this was free response, you could just write that, and that would be the answer. But since it could be uh, multiple choice, what is 27 divided by 3? 9. And what's 9 times 4? 20. No, 30. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's 54 minus 36, which is what? 18, yeah? And that would be the area of this region right here that you would have just found. So that's how big that space is. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So turn over to the next page. Okay. We're going to set up one more, and then we're going to come back. So turn to the next page, and I want you to sketch a graph of the next region. So your equations are x squared and 2x plus 8. So just sketch that for me. x squared and 2x plus 8. What does y equals x squared look like? Okay, parabola. There we go. And what does 2x plus 8 look like? Okay, 8, we'll pretend is here, and it's going which way? Up. Up. Okay. Now, I want to find the area bounded between those curves. So I want to find this right here. Yeah? Does that make sense? I want to be between those. Now, quick question here. Which one is going to be the top of the sandwich? The line or the curve? The Who's on top? The line. The line. So I'm going to set up my integral here. Line minus curve. So it's going to be 2x plus 8 minus x squared. And remember, the way that I determine that is that you have to put the top function first, the bottom function second. Now, what do I still need to find to finish my integral? Where those two graphs do what? Where they intersect. So what am I going to do with my equation? Set them equal. So I'm going to let x squared equal 2x plus 8. Now remember, when it's quadratic, you're going to have to factor, so get everything together. So both of these guys are going to come over here. They used to be positive. What will they be on the other side? 
negative. So x squared equals, oops, hold on, minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. So we want to get all of that junk over to the other side so that we can factor. Okay, so what we'll multiply to negative 8 and subtract to negative 2. Good. So I'm going to use x minus 4, x plus 2. So does that mean that this one is 2? No, you got to solve it first, right? So if this is a minus 4, what is x equal? 4. 4, and this one is? Negative 2. Negative 2. So I'm going to put those onto my graph so that when I'm doing it, I know what order to put them in. So this is x equals negative 2 right here, and this is x equals 4. And so when I integrate, what am I going to put as my bottom boundary? Which number? Negative 2. Negative 2 down here, 4 up here. Now, question, do you have to, that's all one big integral, right? So you don't split this up. You're just going to find the antiderivative. What's the antiderivative of 2x? <coughs> x squared. X squared. What's the antiderivative of plus 8? 8x. 8x. What's the antiderivative of minus x squared? 1 third x cubed. 1 third x cubed. And make sure that you do keep that negative on there because that applies to the x squared. Okay, then I would plug in 4, then I would plug in negative 2, and then I would subtract after that. So let's do 4 first. What's 4 squared? 16. What's 4 times 8 here? 32. 32. And then when I plug in my 4 cubed here, just leave it as a third 4 cubed. That's fine. Now, 16 and 32 are pretty easy to put together. So I'm going to write this as 48 minus a third 4 cubed. 4 cubed is 64, so if you want to put 64 thirds, you can. But remember, you don't have to. Okay, plug it in negative 2 next. What's negative 2 squared? Negative 2 times 8 is a minus 16. And then negative 2 cubed is going to give us a minus 8 multiplied by a negative a third. What's going to happen with your negatives there? Yeah, this one and this one are going to switch to be pluses. Okay? 4 minus 16 is what? 12, right? Did you do crack? Negative 12. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was doing crack all day. Okay, and then what would I do with these two expressions? Subtract them. Now, do you have to work it all out? No, you don't. Okay, 48 minus a third 4 cubed. Negative 12, 8 thirds. Okay, and that would be totally good enough. Okay, any questions about that? <laughs> okay, I want you to rewind now back to the previous page, and we're going to do the other region, which is a cusp region. Okay? okay. <laughs> and then this is your answer. You can just... Okay? The other type of region that they could give you on the AP test um, is a cusp region. And again, I made up these names, so if you work with somebody else from another school, they're going to not go know what you're talking about. But if you draw it, then they will. So basically the difference is that with a cusp region, draw your axis here. And then I want you to draw two graphs that still cross with each other, but that make kind of like a triangle looking shape underneath. And so rather than having one function on top and the other function on bottom, both of your functions end up on the same side and then you have the x-axis as the third side. So that would be like a cusp because you're underneath two different equations instead of having one on top and one on bottom. Does that picture make sense? Yeah. Okay, to find the area of a cusp region, okay, you're going to need two separate integrals. You can't just do it with one big integral. The way that it works is you would go from A to B with whatever that function is, and then you would go from B to C 
with whatever your second function is. You can't because you have a different function as your border each time. So let's say that this side is f of x, this side is g of x. Then the first chunk of my integral would be from a to b with f of x. And then the second region, so think about like this is side 1, then this would be <coughs> side 2. Where would I integrate for side 2? From where to where? B to C of what function? G of X. Okay, so for a cusp region, you have to break it up into two sides. Okay? Um, and then we're going to change the second equation on this one so that it works out. It's going to be um, X plus 2, I think. Hold on, let me sketch it. And then the other one is going to be 2 plus x. Okay, so 4 minus x squared I already drew for you. What would x plus 2 or 2 plus x, what would that look like? Where would it start? It's a line. 2. two and which way does it go? Uh, uphill. So it would be here and it would go like that. Yeah? If it said enclosed between the curves, you would have shaded here. But that's not what it says. It says we want to be bounded above by both of these. So if both of these are going to be on top, what does it say is going to be the below boundary? The x-axis. So do you see how you have like kind of like a funny little triangle region? Uh-huh. So notice that it says I want to be bounded above by F and G. So those have to be on the top. And then I want to be below by the x-axis. So it's basically telling you F and G are both going to go above the region. The x-axis is going to cut below as the bottom. Okay, how many integrals is this going to need for you to do the area? Two. Two. Okay, first question. Let's label these. Do you know what will make 4 minus x squared zero? Yeah, that's a perfect square, right? 4 minus x squared was split up into x plus 2 and x minus 2. So I'm just going to label these two right off the bat. Negative 2 here, positive 2 here. What's the problem, though? We need to know this one. Because remember, that number is going to determine how I split up into the two separate integrals. So draw in maybe just like a dotted line or something. And we need to find where those graphs intersect. Now, how do we find where they intersect? Same as last time. First, you find so numbers. Yeah, just set them equal to each other. So I'm going to let 4 minus x squared equal to plus x. Now, your x squared has to be positive for you to factor. So when I take this guy, I'm going to move it over to this side. So if my x squared was negative on the left, what will it be on the right? Positive, positive x squared. Then I'm going to let my plus x come next, and then I have my plus 2. But remember, I can't factor if I leave the 4, so I have to also bring that 4 across as my next step. So if I minus 4 here and here, what is 2 minus 4? Good. So I have 0 equals x squared plus x minus 2. And then from there, we're going to factor that to know where they cross. So think about what will multiply to negative 2 and subtract to 1. Good, so x plus 2 and x minus 1. Which means what are the two places that they cross? Switch the signs. Negative 2 and 1. Negative 2 and 1. Now, did we already know they cross at negative 2 here? Yes. Yeah, from our picture. But that means that this over here is a 1. Okay, so set up your two integrals to represent that area. Okay, so you have to think about which side you're on. So let's do this green side first. What is the boundary that I'm integrating underneath? The line or the curve? Which one am I touching? The line. The line. So when I integrate that green chunk, I'm going to use the line 2 plus x. 
Now, what is the endpoints for that region? From um, negative, two to one. negative two to one. DX plus, and then for the second chunk of my region, okay, maybe we'll do this one orange. Okay, where am I integrating for that side? One to two. And then what is the function that's touching that side of the region? The, the curve. Yeah, the four minus x squared. So rather than only doing one antiderivative all together, you'd have to work out basically like two separate baby problems. Okay, so on the left, what's the antiderivative of two plus x? Okay, so 2 would be 2x is the antiderivative. x would be 1 half x squared. Plugging in negative 2 and 1. Okay, second chunk, and we're not going to finish this. We're just going to set it up. Okay, but what would my second antiderivative be? Antiderivative of 4 is 4x. And then what about the x squared? Antiderivative would be what? 1 third x cubed. X cubed. And the reason that you can't combine those is, do you notice your endpoints are different? You're plugging in totally different sets of numbers. So you would just have to work out those two answers and kind of keep it all separate. Or okay? Because you don't have the same function on top for each side. So on this side, I'm staying under the line, but then on this side, I'm staying under the curve. Okay? So turn the page. And I want you to do part B of that question we just did. So the exact same graph, we already did the graphing part, but we're going to change the region that we're going to use. So look how it's described here. It says, set up but do not evaluate an expression to represent the area. Look how it's worded. Bounded above by F and G and below by the x-axis. So if I want F and G to both be on top, I have to pick this right here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, if this makes you feel better, peek ahead. A lot of times on the AP test, they'll do stuff like this to kind of help you out. Do you see how they'll like shade it and kind of give you an idea of where you were at? So if the graphing part of this is what's hard, I would say most of the time, they're going to give you a picture to look at, or you'd have a calculator, which is helpful too. Okay? Yeah, you might not. I don't know. Okay, so looking at our graph, what are the numbers that we know? We know negative 2. Do we know this number right here? Zero. Zero. Because remember, where does x squared hit? Right at zero. So we have this one and this one. What do we still need? That one. That is an x-intercept. How do you find an x-intercept? Uh, Ooh, look, I put it there for you. Yeah. If you want to find an x-intercept, you're just going to set it equal to 0. So if I want to know where this cross is, I'm going to take my 2x plus 8, and I'm going to set that equal to 0. And I'm going to solve, and that's going to tell me when it would have hit that x-axis. So minus the 8 across, 2x is negative 8, then what? Yep negative 4. So that's this one right here. Okay, try for me now to set up the two integrals. Remember, we're not doing it, but set up the two integrals that would give you that exact amount of space from here to here, under the curves but above the x-axis. You'll have two separate integrals, remember, for a cu uh, cusp region. Okay, what's my side number one going to be? Negative four, negative 4 to negative 2, good. Negative 4 to negative 2. And then which function am I touching, the line or the curve? Okay, the line, the 2x plus 8. Plus, then I need a totally separate integral for side 2. Negative 2 to 0. Negative 2 to 0. And who's on top or touching for that one? The x squared, yep, the x. And then from there, you would have to work those out as separate chunks. You couldn't put them together because they have different endpoints. Okay? 
Um, okay, let's go ahead and sketch number two. We probably won't finish. Okay, uh, sketch the two graphs for me. 3x squared, how is that different than x squared? What's the only change? Narrow. It's a little bit narrower. It's a little bit steeper. But other than that, it's still going to hit at 0. And then what about negative x plus 14? It's going to go down. Okay, it's going downhill. Where does it start? 14. So we'll say 14 is like here, and then it's going to go downhill. And actually, I'm going to continue this all the way to the bottom because we are going to have both regions. Okay, now for the first one, it says I want to be bounded above by F and G. And I want to be below by the x-axis. Which region is that talking about? Is it a sandwich or a cusp? Okay, shade the region on your paper that it's talking about. It's going to be a sandwich. A cusp. It's going to be a cusp. Because look, I want, uh, I want F and G to both be above. Mm -hmm. So I want to be here above, and then I want the x-axis to be the bottom of the region. Whoa. Yeah? Um, and then go down to the second part. Look at how the wording is different. I want to be between F and G. Another uh, set of words that they'll use is they'll say enclosed by. Okay, but it's kind of the same thing. So this would be your second region for Part B. Okay? So what I would like for you to do real quick is um, just set up the integrals for both of those. I know we don't have endpoints. Um, actually, this one we know is zero. And when is uh, negative x plus 14, when is that going to hit the ground over here? 14. Yep, at 14. So just put x equals 14 on that side. Uh, what would make plus 14 oh. 0? Right. Now, this middle one, how would I have to find it? By finding where they cross. And we probably don't have time to do that. But just set up, let's just call it m for now. For like middle. Okay. What would your first side We'll say side 1. Okay, 0 to m of 3x squared dx plus. And then for my side 2, I'm over here. I want to go from m to where? m to 14. And negative x plus 14 would be on top. How many antiderivatives do you have to do? Two, Two totally separate questions, and then you'd add their answers together. Okay? Now, down here, what would you do? Um, if you want to be between them, integral of what? Zero. Well, we don't know the endpoint, so just pretend. But what would go on top? Line or curve? Okay, make sure you're in your sandwich, though. Okay. You're in this region. It'd be the line on top, the curve on bottom. So it would be negative x plus 14 minus 3x squared. And remember, that would be one big integral versus having two totally separate integrals. Okay? And then we would need to find these numbers, but we're like almost right at the bell. Okay? And we're going to do another day of this tomorrow, um, but you can start on your homework if you want to. If you want to wait, that's fine. It won't be due till Friday. Okay? Uh, probably, yeah.